Hey, good morning. Today we're going to train a mobile net. Uh, mobile net is the state of the art uh, net that's been designed by Google for um, compact image recognition or classification. Uh, we're going to use this for audio data, uh, specifically for spectrograms of uh, bird sounds. Uh, I'd had another net built before, which is a custom convolutional net. Um, decided this time to switch it out to mobile net, and mobile net is much more proficient, uh, much more accurate. So we're going to stick with this. Um, yeah, going forward. And I wanted to show you how it was done. So we just pulled in from Kara's applications, and these were the uh, default arguments coming in. Uh, the ones that we're going to change are the number of classes, uh, the input shape, and we're going to set weights to be none uh, because we're using spectrograms and not images. Uh, spectrograms have a much uh, different geometric shapes in them than normal images do. So we're not going to start with regular uh, pre-trained weights. We're just going to start from scratch. Um, also, no pre-processing. Again, we're doing this all on uh, spectrograms from bird sounds, and this is for a bird or AI model. Uh, so we're going to look at how that's done here. Um, also, with this, we'll show um, how to check that your GPU is being fully utilized. Oftentimes, you can put a GPU on a box uh, expecting it to go faster, and it doesn't uh, because there's a different bottleneck in your training process. Um, so I'll show you how to check that out and what we did here to get around that. Uh, first, here is the previous model that we had in here. Uh, it's spectrogram size of 512 by 512 by 1, and the number of classes of 1002. And then here, we, uh, we're mapping those TF records back to data set. I'll show you in just a mo minute why that's important and what we're doing there. But first, this is the old model. Um, just coming in with a few 2D convolutions and max pooling after it. We have, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times that we're going through that process. And then a few dense layers. Uh, flattening it back out, and then doing a soft max here. So again, we're just coming out with a single class um, answer. And this worked uh, a little bit. You can see our accuracy from it. Actually, I already erased it. It was, um, it was below 1%. Uh, but that was kind of expect expected because this is the first iteration through on the sound uh, event detection process. Um, and pretty much what that means is we're just training three models and using the previously trained model uh, to sort our training data and make sure that it's more accurate for the next model that we're training. Uh, there's another video that kind of goes more in depth of what that's doing. Uh, so anyway, this is how we're training the model this time. Starting off similarly with uh, TensorFlow and NumPy and our same shapes. And then here we are creating our map function. So again, we want to make sure that the bottleneck is the processor and not uh, reading up the data and pre-processing the data. Uh, so we have everything stored in, as TF record files. TF records are pre-serialized, so it's really quick and easy to read from them. Um, and they're also already pre-shuffled the way that we wrote the data to the files. Um, so we don't have to cache anything in and shuffle it as we're reading it back out. Um, TF records are fairly simple. Uh, you pretty much just create a dictionary here of um, stating the, the shape of the data that's in there. In this case, we have a class, and that is a, a list of size 1. We have a spectrogram, which has our shape of 512 by 512 by 1. And that's a float, and that's an integer. And then for each uh, example, we're mapping it through this parse single example. And then it comes back out as a dictionary to where here we are uh, casting it to the, the shape that we want and the, uh, the integer type, going from an int64 to an int32 and returning it back out. And then here we're creating the data set. So we're just reading through all those TF record files. Uh, creating TF record data set, mapping it, batching it, and seeing it to the model. Uh, here's where we're actually creating that mobile net. So it's really simple. Um, just comes from TF Keras Applications Mobile Net V3 Large. There are a few other versions of mobile net. Um, there's also a V3 small. Uh, but for our use case, large is uh, small enough, right? It's uh, about a 63 meg model. Um, so it'll totally fit on a uh, like a mobile uh, application or in the web browser, which is how we're deploying this. Here we're setting that input shape, uh, number of classes, the weights to none, uh, and we're leaving the classification activation as softmax because we want one class coming out. So we're gonna go and run this and we will see a summary of that model uh, and it's gonna compile it. Then I'll show you in just a moment how we are training it and how we're gonna make sure that it is utilizing that GPU the way that we're expecting. Um, and how you can check uh, on your own instance to make sure that, again, if you attach a GPU to an instance that you're running, um, you're actually using it properly. Uh, here's a summary of the model. It's a big, long model. There are several uh, articles written about 
what all these different layers do. Um, most of them are just expanded convolutions and it's looping through them again and again. But getting to the end of it here, we can see that we have one output of a thousand to um, yeah, 1,002 numbers because it's a prediction layer and that's how many classes we have coming out. So here we're gonna call fit on it. And this whole thing takes a little over an hour to train. Uh, so we're not gonna train the whole thing on this video. I'm just gonna run it and show you how we can check that um, yeah, that's properly using the GPU. So we'll give it just a moment to go ahead and start. While it's starting, we're gonna be running this command right here, NVIDIA SMI, and that'll show right here, the volatile GPU utilization. And that is, uh, yeah, it's like IO top or top for the processor on your GPU. And if we run watch dash n.5 NVIDIA SMI, this will keep running that command every half a second. So we can kind of see in, you know, just about real time what it's doing. Um, see the power usage on it and see the uh, the utilization of that GPU. And this is again important because if you're paying money to get that GPU going and you wanna make sure that you're using it um, to its full ability. And it is, and that's uh, how it trains this model in about an hour, uh, going through all this training data, which comes from about 125,000 different audio files. Uh, in previous videos, we already created spectrograms from those audio files and then turn those spectrograms into TF records and now we're feeding those TF records into a model to train it. Uh, and next, we are going to use this model um, to reclassify all of that training data, uh, in which case we'll take the bits of it that scored the best and use that on a, the next iteration of this model to, again, uh, find the bits of the audio that are important to us. You know, these are long audio files, and um, we're going to end up creating a model that takes about two seconds of audio to, uh, to classify a bird. Um, but yeah, five to 15 minute audio files and not all of it is the bird going again and again and again. We have to find the portions of it that are actually uh, pertinent to us. So that's what we're doing here. We're training this, uh, almost overfitting it on big portions of the audio. Um, and then we're going to slim that down and then slim that down one more time. So thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll have another video coming up soon of uh, how we're classifying this and uh, going through the next uh, next step in the sound event detection process.